in this video we are going to be looking at extending the uh, Holtz method with simple exponential smoothing models with trend to incorporate seasonality. So this is really looking at a full-blown model with uh, the levels with trends and seasonality. Um, the this type of model was introduced in the 1960s um, with Holtz's paper in 1957 and Winters' paper. Winters was born to study seasonality, as the name suggests. The component form uh, is, is as following. So you have a forecast equation, um, which is looking at, which is, which is relating the forecast with the level with the trend as we have seen in the previous videos and also the seasonal component s okay so you have level which is lt bt is the trend and st plus h minus m times k plus one is the seasonal component now you have three smoothing equations here one uh, that uh, takes a look at how the level uh, uh, what is the evolution of the level itself and the evolution of the trend and the seasonal component, okay? So as you introduce more and more components, the, the smoothing uh, uh, equations get added to the model. Now, um, k here is the integer part of the um, seasonal component, and that ensures that the estimates from the final year are used for forecasting, which is important. You want to use that uh, for you you want to use the most recent data for forecasting okay and uh, then you have the regular restrictions on the earlier parameters uh, smoothing parameters alpha and beta lying in the uh, strictly in the zero one interval and um, uh, gamma which is which lies between zero and one minus alpha okay here m denotes the period uh, of seasonality so this is you know if you had monthly data then that's going to be m is going to be 12 quarterly data m is going to be 4 and so on and so forth um what is important is that there are two two variations in seasonal methods uh, depending upon what you see in the graph uh, one seasonal method might be well suited uh, for or better suited for the forecasting problem at hand. So the seasonal components or seasonal variations are of two types. One is the additive version and the other is the multiplicative version. The seasonal variation uh, for the additive model is is used when you see, a se you see the seasonality that is roughly fixed across time. So you see that uh, the seasonal variations, you know, the peaks and troughs are roughly constant throughout the series. You don't see them growing over time or diminishing over time. Okay, so that's when you use the additive model. On the other hand, you would use the multiplicative model when seasonal variations are changing proportional to the level of the series. Okay, so you, you, you'll be able to see um, how one outperforms the other depending upon what the series looks like. Now for the additive model, this is usually expressed in absolute terms uh, and has the same scale as the series uh, that we are looking at. Um, and usually what you do is in your level equation, you subtract, subtract off the seasonal component. Okay, You can go back to the, the equations and see how that's done. Now in the multiplicative model, on the other hand, the a component is expressed in relative terms as a percentage. So the series is, is typically seasonally adjusted by dividing by the seasonal component rather than uh, subtracting off uh, the seasonal component as in the additive model. Okay, And in the additive model, so the third difference really is that within each year the seasonal component would add up to zero approximately because you have sort of this fixed or constant uh, uh, variation happening throughout the year so the peak uh, uh, the peak would cancel out with the trough or you know whatever variation you're seeing cancels out in the end and the components add up to zero approximately um, but for the multiplicative model this is not true the um, seasonal components would add up to approximately the uh, number of the seasonal periods itself so for quarterly data um, the multi for the multiplicative model you would have um, uh, m equals 4. So 
that's what would happen. So these are really important things to think about when you are working with seasonal uh, models. This is a nice graph that shows um, the Medicare Austra cost uh, of vaccines stripped uh, in, in Australia. And uh, the black line here, which is sort of hardly visible, but the black line is the original data. And the um, other colored lines are showing you the fitted values of, from the seasonal models given different values of gamma which is the smoothing parameter when it comes to uh, seasonal models. So uh, going back here, the seasonal component is basically a weighted average between, so here's he, here the first component is representing what is left off of the series uh, when you subtract off the level and the trend which is we are hoping that that's the seasonal component. But we also have um, in the second term, which is the weighted average, right? There's gamma here, there's one minus gamma here. This is the seasonal component, okay? So we're looking at some sort of a weighted average here for the seasonal component. And also, if you wanted to look at the level equation, you were subtracting off uh, the seasonal component here. Okay, so going back to this graph, we see that when there is when the smoothing parameter in the seasonal in the seasonal equation, uh, seasonal smoothing equation is zero, gamma is zero. Uh, this represents a case where seasonality is pretty much fixed. It's not changing over time. You see the constant. Uh, if you look at the red line, these peaks and troughs, right, remain constant over time. Okay, and they pretty much cancel each other out. So if there is a sharp rise here, there's a sharp fall. So if you add up these components, this is going to be equal to zero. If you have a value of gamma that lies between zero and one, like 0 0.71, you see that the seasonal variations vary. So it's hard to see here, but you can see that the green comes up here. Then the green is a lot, you know, smaller. The peaks and troughs are smaller here, smaller here. So there's some sort of updating going on uh, when gamma is equal to 0.71. Uh, on the other hand, uh, when you have gamma equals 1, the seasonality updates completely. Okay, So you have seasonal fluctuations that are so pronounced that they pretty much match up to the data itself. So you can see the blue line really nicely tracks the black line, which is the original data. So here you can see the effect of changing the value of gamma and how it can uh, be used to. Just one parameter can really track uh, very well the, the time series of interest and hopefully um, help us in forecasting the time series. A much cleaner representation of the Holt-Winters seasonal methods when we look at additive or multiplicative components is by looking at um, forecast equations and um, uh, sorry the uh, the state space representation so you here you have a forecast equation which is sort of similar to before where you have um, the forecast equals the level of the time series plus h times the trend component plus the seasonal component but in the state space representation you have the observation equation which is uh, giving you the relationship between uh, the observed value of the time series and the different uh, components, right? And you also have this uh, error here that is going to have a distribution of its own. And then you have the three state equations that are governing the evolution of the states over time. And again, you have, notice here, uh, epsilon t comes up in an additive form. So this is an additive uh, state space representation of the ETS model. And it's represented by AAA, which, sees, which says that the error is additive, the trend is additive, and the seasonal component is also additive, which is what you're seeing here. Now, the forecast errors in this case are going to be just uh, pretty simple as before, you know, just like with regression al analysis, yt, which is the observed value of the time series, minus the fitted value of the time series. So you can try and write writing down a simpler model which which excludes the trend. If you don't see a trend and you only see um, seasonality, you might actually 
work with this type of a model. Okay, now if we look at the whole winters multiplicative methods, uh, then we have um, the seasonal component actually divided rather than subtracted in the level equations. And um, I think the state space representation is much cleaner to see. So let's take a look here um, at the ETS MAM model where the error is multiplicative, the trend is additive, and the seasonal component is multiplicative. So in this uh, sort of a setup, you have the forecast equation that connects your or relates the forecast to the different components, but in a multiplicative way this time. So you have the seasonal component multiplied with the level and the trend. The observation equation in this case also shows you the same thing where you have the error, which is multiplicative, and the seasonal component, which is multiplied with the trend and the level components. And finally, you have the state equations in which everywhere uh, you have the multiplicative error, sorry, you have the error, it appears in a multiplicative form. Okay, so what is important here is to remember that the forecast errors are going to be very different than in the additive model. In the, the forecast errors are going to be on a relative scale. Okay, so it's going to be what you see, the error that you had before divided by the fitted values of the time series. Let's take a look at the look at an example here. So what you have here is an example uh, of Australian holiday tourism where this we're using the tourism data for this and we are looking at all the holidays in Australia we can summarize you can use the summarize command you've worked with this data before so you can sum the trips over time and then try to fit a model and see the differences so um, you can actually put two models at the same time the additive seasonal model and the multiplicative seasonal model and uh, the idea here is that the only thing that is going to change is uh, not not just the season but the error as well so for the additive model you're going to say ETS which is your function uh, trips which is the series of interest is regressed on the error which is additive and the seasonal component which is additive okay and the trend component is additive we're not changing the trend component across this okay but for the multiplicative model you have ETS again, and TRIPS is going to be regressed on the error, uh, which is now going to be multiplicative, and the season is going to be multiplicative. And then you can try to uh, forecast and see what that looks like. So uh, here you see that the orange represents the multiplicative model, the forecast from the multiplicative model, and those are much more pronounced as compared to the additive model which is pretty much by design. Okay, so we can see here that probably the peaks uh, for Australian tourism happened during the summer. So this is, you know, this is a good model. You can see that uh, you can probably think about a multiplicative model as sort of the upper bound for what forecasts would be. But here we're not plotting the, um, um, the prediction intervals, which you can also do. Now you can also always look at the components if you're interested you know, from different models. So if you look at components from uh, the model FIT, FIT was looking at two different models. This is going to throw two different states here. Um, the important thing is to realize that um, the seasonal components would add up to zero in the additive model. Look at the fluctuations here you can add up all of these in a particular year these values are going to add up to zero but for the multiplicative model this is uh, perhaps this is quarterly data or monthly data um, anyway it's hard to see here you can take a look at home but but the idea here is that the um, components from the multiplicative uh, the, se the seasonal components in the multiplicative state are going to be adding up to the uh, frequency of the season itself. Okay, there's a nice example if you like uh, using daily data in your book, which I think you should just try for the fun of it. 
Um, the Holt Winters um, is also extended uh, to introduce dampening, and it usually is the single most accurate, accurate forecasting method for seasonal data. That includes trend, obviously. Okay, so here you can see that you, if you introduce the damping parameter, it's introduced just as before uh, in front of the trend component. And then you have, um, each time you have BT minus 1 up here, you have the phi in front of it, which is the damping parameter. So this is very useful. Um, you can take a look at, so you can actually practice with a different uh, data set at home.